Welcome to lecture number 29 of BCE 463-663 Modern Control. Today's topic is LQG LCR control. That stands for a linear quadratic Gaussian, same thing we've been looking at, LQG methods, loop transfer recovery. This is a kind of a cute way to use LQG methods to force the plants to behave a very specific way. Now, a little bit of background. We have currently two different methods to design feedback controllers, pole placement and LQR. Pole placement, or Bascura, allows you to place the poles wherever you like. It's very easy to get a very specific response as a result, but a problem with pole placement is you tend to have large feedback gains, and I don't know what to do with multiple inputs. LQR techniques are nice. They tend to give you smaller feedback gains and more robust designs, but it's difficult to get a very specific response using LQR techniques. I can play with Q and R, but sometimes it just doesn't want to behave that way. With LQG LTR methods, what you're doing is you're using LQR techniques to get a very specific response. Kind of best of both worlds. The way this works is I have my plant, just like always, your x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx. I now define a reference model. This is how I want the plant to behave. I'll then take the difference between the two. That's the error. What I want to do is come up with my full state feedback gains. I want to find out feedback gains times my reference model and the feedback gains times my state, such that I force the error to zero. If the error is zero, then y equals ym, and my plant's behaving just like my reference model. So that's the idea. <clears throat> In state space, the way this looks, the augmented system is as follows. I've got my plant states, x dot equals ax plus bu. My reference model, xm dot is a sub m x sub m plus b sub m r. The output is y minus ym, the difference between the actual output and the model's output. I'll now use LQR techniques, where q is just y transpose y, and r is 1. As I weight q more and more heavily, increase alpha from 0 to infinity, I'll eventually force the two to converge. Um, and what I get with LQR methods then are my feedback gains. The feedback gains times my states and the feedback gains times my reference model. So that's the idea. To illustrate this, um, let's give it a challenge. Let's take a fourth order heat equation. This is a system that behaves very slowly and try to behave, make it behave like an undamp, underdamped system with a settling time of 4 seconds. Dominant pull at minus 1 plus minus j3. Again, the heat equation doesn't want to behave this way, but let's just see if LQR methods can do it. So the first step is to define your reference model. Give me any reference model that satisfies that transfer function. And here I'm just using controller canonical form. Uh, any form works. I'll now define the augmented system with the plant and the reference model, and the output is the difference in the two. I'll now choose Q to be your C transpose C, R is 1, and then pick alpha. As alpha goes to infinity, the two will converge. So to start with, let's have alpha be 10 to the 6. LQR methods, you tend to use fairly large gains. I get my set of feedback gains, so this is the gain times x. This is the time gain times the reference model. If I look at the poles of the closed loop system, the reference model's poles are fixed. They don't change. The plant's poles are shifting. There's the dominant pole of the plant. These are a little bit faster. If these are arbitrarily fast, I'll then track the set point, the reference model. These aren't that much faster than the reference model, so the tracking may not be that good. If I look at the step response, what I'll see is the reference model is how I want the plant to behave. This is how it actually behaves for step input. The tracking isn't great, but this is the optimal. That's what LQR does. It gives you the optimal. Given my weightings Q and R, this is the best I can do. If I want to get closer, I'll use more input. It's somewhat hard to tell how this is behaving because the DC gains are different. I can fix that just by scaling the input so the DC gains are both 1. If I do that, then here's the output. Again, it's not behaving exactly like I want, but that's what you get with the alpha of 10 to the 6. If I want better tracking, what I do is I increase alpha. 
meaning increase q. Changing q to be 10 to the 12th times c transpose c, I get another set of feedback gains. Note the gains are getting larger. The closed loop poles, again the reference model, its poles at minus 1 plus minus j3. The plan is getting faster. And as this gets faster and faster, I can start tracking this reference model. If I look at the step response, I can see that the plant is in fact tracking the reference model. That's the idea behind LQG LTR. As I let alpha go to infinity, I eventually wind up with the plant behaving as I want. It is tracking my reference model. And this is fairly impressive. I've got something that satisfies the heat equation that's very slow with real poles, behaving like an underdamped system. I can do it, but it's going to take a lot of control effort. And you can see that if I look at the control input, this is what's happening. The input slams high, almost at 10,000, then goes low, then high, then low. To get that kind of response, I need a lot of control input. Um, this is a slightly unreasonable system. I'm trying to take a heat equation and behave it in a way it doesn't want. did that for the point of showing that LQG, LTR methods, can force the system to behave any way you want, even if it doesn't want to behave that way. might take a lot of control input, but you can do it.